Hello, and welcome to the Grizzled Survivor Show. Today, we are going to begin our series on the Rocky Flats Criticality Report, which details the numerous safety violations that occurred at the plant, as well as explaining several things about the actual and theoretical accidents. In this report are shocking examples of laziness, complacency, ignorance, corruption, as well as the risks and hazards left over at the site from the plant operations. In the first part, we'll go over the executive summary of the report. A relatively short section, but one that is full of information about what we can expect to see in the rest of the report. I'm also going to be doing my best to translate this report in a common language that non-scientists can understand. As such, I won't be reading this report line for line, however, I will provide a link in the description to this video of where you can find this report if you would like to see it. And um, instead, I'm going to be addressing the highlights of each section and explaining points of interest. And uh, I been working with vdoc.pro in order to have these points clarified since a lot of this is uh, very scientific and uh, not really written for the average person to understand. Um, at the people of vdoc.pro, especially Greg Marsh, he worked on the report when it was released, or at least he looked at it, and he actually has notes written from the um, time period. I think it was 89 when he wrote this uh, response to this report, so we have that as well. But let's start with the report itself. The report itself begins by announcing that it is a report on criticality safety concerns at the plant. And this paper was done before the FBI raid of the plant and was conducted by a group known as Scientech, which is generally um, regarded to be reputable. Um, the technical aspects of their observations are, are what we'll be going over here. Um, and, and it should be noted that you know, um, the fact that the plant continued to ignore Scientech um, is a combination, uh, as we'll see, of laziness and oversight at the plant, as well as perhaps, you know, money changing hands in, the, in, you know, shadowed rooms to make all this happen. We won't speculate a whole lot on that, but some of it does come up from uh, some of the people that we talked to here. So, to begin with, what is a criticality accident? Well, the nature of the materials handled at Rocky Flats meant that you really had to be careful to store it in a certain way um, to prevent certain conditions from, you know, existing with the plutonium that was being stored. Um, so, a criticality accident is an uncontrolled fission. And uh, this can occur through various means, but mostly either, you know, putting something next to the plutonium taking something that's preventing the plutonium from, you know, reacting away, or, you know, adding even normally non-fissionable materials such as water, which normally would be safe, but you put it next to plutonium, it's not safe at all. And a, a criticality accident is not what you would picture like an apocalyptic mushroom cloud, um, but it releases what is known as neutron and gamma radiation. And uh, from what I've heard, if this had happened at Rocky Flats, Denver would have been decimated. It would have, there would have been mass fatalities. Um, these radiation types, what they do, uh, they don't turn you into a cool mutant at all. Um, like you see in video games or movies, they break down your cells. And then as your body attempts to fix these cells, um, they mutate and, and, cause, and, and you know, they can cause cancer, um, these radiation rays. And... Um, since there is plutonium still there at the site, this is definitely a concern. And since water is listed as a catalyst for these criticalities, um, some of this stuff is still outside. And, uh, you know, there's groundwater, there's, um, uh, you know, almost anything, uh, any sorts of water. Rain, groundwater could be triggering these pucks of plutonium that still remain out there at the site to emit these dangerous radiation particles. Um... Plants also that grow out there, the grass and everything, soaks up these radiation sources, um, and it it just uh, emits them back out. I mean, getting these brushed up against your clothing could potentially expose you to plutonium contamination up there. 
The executive summary goes on to say that a criticality could cause steam to build up, which in the best case scenario would cause a rupture, which would then stop the criticality. Well, that's very good, but at worst would lead to further criticalities occurring. The lack of conventional explosives meant that a nuclear bomb type explosion could not occur there, but a criticality would still have proven lethal if of a large enough scale. So even though it's not going to go boom and blow half of Denver away in a mushroom cloud, it's just going to send this silent wave of radiation out and everyone that was downwind of it, they would have probably been toast. Um, whether it was, you know, within a week or within a couple months or a year, they would have probably died. And uh, so this was definitely something that when it came to light was very concerning to people. Now, Scientech found no indication that any events have had occurred and vdoc.pro confirmed to me that this was most likely the case but even this silver lining is darkened by the multiple safety and procedural infractions discovered by the scientech team rocky flats management are mentioned as not viewing these discoveries in a positive light and you know you can see why and it goes on to mention a few examples the first is a 16 kilograms of plutonium does downwind of the hepa filter of the chute under the glove boxes used to handle the material this was in the form of a slurry the composition of the slurry isn't really mentioned here, but we can only hope it wasn't water because that would have caused that dust to be reacting and, and emitting these radiation particles. Now, it does mention that in proper arrangement or in certain conditions, this slurry could have caused a, a criticality accident. It does mention the slurry dust had to pass through another filter. So even though it was on the one side of the HEPA filter, it still had another filter it would have had to pass through um, in order to you know leak out into the environment um, this report does not deal with the fires that had occurred here previously either. I don't, I, I don't believe, at least at this point, it doesn't mention those or their effects on the environment. And there were several accidents that did occur that, of a non-criticality level. Um, and we will delve into those as we continue our Rocky Flats um, documentaries and exposés here. Um, management denied this was happening, um, even though workers had come forward and tried to blow the whistle or tell the management team, hey, look, I'm seeing this hazardous thing. And, you know, management just swept it under the rug. Um, they found dust, plutonium dust, in almost every ventilation duct out there. And uh, when they did renovations and stuff in the buildings in the past, all this dust had been kicked around and, and potentially exposing contractors, I would imagine, although this report doesn't mention that. But you have to imagine, if you're a construction worker working in this compound, you know, and you're sanding and you're blowing everything around and, the, and you just think it's dust, yeah, it's plutonium. And how often is a, is a civilian contractor prepared to deal with plutonium? Very rare, I would say, that you have a civilian contractor wearing proper sort of protective clothing to be exposed to plutonium. Now, this report recommends a gamma spectrometry, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, to find other examples of this occurring. Now, this isn't cheap, which is probably why they opted not to do it, um, but if the radiation was bad enough, a helicopter could have detected it. And it says mainly why they hadn't done it before is just because the plant didn't really give a uh, crap about doing it. They didn't care. They also found a weak application of the nuclear safety principle of having two fail-safes to prevent any criticalities. It makes mention of this being the standard procedure in almost every other plant, and Rocky Flats lacking any meaningful application of this, mostly using procedural and administrative ba barriers to prevent these conditions from arising. We then go on to read the tale of Building 776. In the basement, 355-gallon drums of plutonium residue were stored. The sump pump in the room was not working, and the walls bore evidence of groundwater flooding. Water was leaking from the room above. Think back to the causes of any criticality. Water could have very easily caused a criticality to occur. There was no radiation or water alarms present in there either. None of that was present. Building 371 had a vertical stack of drums. This is another building, 371. We just got done talking about 776 with no alarms and water leaking in. So building 371 had a vertical stack of drums that weren't really secured to anything. Um, so it goes on to say in the event of an earthquake or vibration, they could have potentially fallen in a way that could have caused a criticality accident to occur. Despite all of this, the team, after analyzing several different factors, did not find evidence of a criticality accident. So it does mention again that they did not find evidence of this having occurred out there. Um, the longest tenured employees were tested um, and they were well within the accepted levels for radiation. Um, the report is misleading by saying that even if one had occurred, the fact that it cannot be detected m would have meant that it was harmless because there's, they're arguing, well, okay, so even if one did occur, the fact that we didn't really find it, 
you know, probably means that you would have been safe. Um, the very presence of plutonium in the environment is dangerous in the quantities that you can still find today on the Rocky Flat site. Now, the team found over 600 procedural infractions from 1962 to 1989. The report states that these are not indicative of any past criticalities, but no effort was made to prevent criticalities from happening either. It was kind of just dumb luck. These infractions were due to complacency by plant workers and poor communication between the plant workers. Um, many of these infractions were of a minor but repeating nature. They included violations on the mass, separation distance, and volume of the storage drums. These accidents are unlikely to cause an accident, a criticality accident, according to the report, since they only breached one of the two barriers used in the safety of the plant. Eight of these incidents, however, involved kilogram-sized chunks of plutonium handled in ways that created that risk creating a criticality um, that would have been sufficient enough to pollute huge areas of Denver with radioactive rays, which you wouldn't really be able to even tell were there. Rumors of criticalities, the report states, are mostly due to workers using the term criticality to describe accidents or situations that weren't criticalities. Um, but this shows that they really didn't have any idea about what they were working with and what they were dealing with. These workers were not very educated. It was kind of a, a job that almost anyone could get hired on there for, you know, the lowest common denominator, and a job that offered a degree of job security I'm sure there's government benefits involved with this job, and so lots of people signed on board. But they don't really have any idea how to communicate what they're seeing to the to the management, and so or or to outsiders, to the teams that come in and monitor safety. So instead, what they say is it was a criticality, which apparently, according to this report, was not the case. So it, the report recommends that the manager keep in mind the plant was still open when this report came out. So it recommends that the management retrain everyone in order to get them on the same page and and get them to understand a little bit more about what a criticality is. The next section of the report, at least this executive summary, go on to talk about the levels of cesium and strontium in the plant environments. It says that these are normal levels found almost everywhere. These items are present almost worldwide um, because of fallout and nuclear weapons testing. So we cause these to be present almost worldwide. If a criticality had occurred, the amounts would have been much larger. Um, you know, you would have definitely been able to tell that there was an additional amount, you know, differing from the fallout levels that are always there. So we're getting towards the end of the executive summary, and it's still criticizing the lack of management oversight and questioning, you know, and questioning the bad practices and why management hadn't questioned these practices. No one addressed the plutonium dust in the ducts. Um, that's mainly what it falls back on to mention that again. Um, and bringing it up is obviously it's a very serious issue. The management is also criticized for not being proactive in addressing the issues before they got to the point of being a criticality hazard. Um, you know, these management, they just kind of let it drag until they had to address it or it could have been fatal for a large amount of people. The report once again mentions the dust and how, so it goes back to the dust again a third time in this, you know, towards this end part and, and talks about how the current safety standards fail to address the, uh, the dust in the vents. I mean, it says the workers were afraid to tell the management about the violations they saw, which you can understand in 2018, you know, uh, as I'm recording this, there's a hurricane going on and, and people are at risk of losing their jobs for missing time because they're either had to evacuate for the hurricane or they're stranded due to the hurricane. So you can imagine people didn't want to lose this job by telling their boss about something they potentially saw. They don't want to be the one that has that fall on their shoulders. And, and we definitely can understand that um, in our daily lives, those of us who have jobs. So the report wraps up by saying that nothing had happened there yet as of 1989. The practices in place will never allow the plant to operate as safely as it should and recommends the Department of Energy go in and work with the management to improve conditions. Since the plant was raided by FBI a year later, we can assume this probably didn't happen. So as you can see, things were pretty terrible out there at Rocky Flats. Toxic waste seemed to be thrown around like confetti on New Year's Eve or, you know, just... Whee! Radiation. You have some radiation, and you have some radiation, like Oprah. But let's continue to delve into this report here and find out how bad things really were. When we're done, we'll move on to VDoc.pro's um, criticism of the report, and uh, I'll provide you with a link to read that as well. 
thank you so much for joining us today on the Grizzled Survivor Show. I know this is kind of a departure from the normal things that we do, but I do want to show you that you don't have to go to Chernobyl to find the Wasteland. The Wasteland could easily find you. If you like what we're doing here on this show, our mix of post-apocalyptic survival and, uh, you know, urban exploration post-apocalyptic movies if you like what you see please go to our patreon you can find that at patreon.com slash griddle survivor give whatever you feel like i offer rewards too so i would be more than happy to see um what your recommendations are for your five dollar pledge for movies or games for me to review Take time to go to our Instagram account, at Grizzled Survivor. You can see pictures um, that I don't put up on the YouTube channel here. And uh, check us out on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash Grizzled Survivor, where you'll find updates, videos, everything that you would find here, as well as maybe some extras. If you did like this video, please click the like button, hit subscribe, comment, let me know what you thought about it whether it was positive or negative go to my friends at vdoc.pro check it out see what they can do for you they're incredible very smart guys thank you once again for watching this video and hopefully you learned something and we're a little bit entertained happy survival and we'll see you next time